Masechet Yevamot Af Ayin Dalid. Two main topics today. Uh, first, we're continuing our discussion about whether an Arel can eat Maser Sheni. And then, um, something that's, uh, well, that was mentioned in the Mishnah, uh, can someone Tameh eat Teruma? Okay, so regarding this first case that was asked to Rav Sheshat uh, yesterday, Rav Sheshat tried to bring a proof from uh, bring a proof but from a Mishnah, but it was not conclusive. We're now going to bring three attempted proofs from different Baraitot. Uh, none of these are going to be conclusive, but we will end with a statement of Rabbi Yitzchak, who says, in fact, the Nadel is prohibited from Maaser Sheni, and he is going to prove it from Gezera Shava from Pesach which is what we proposed all the way in the beginning, but we weren't sure if it was a Gezer Shava or a Kava Chomed. He will say, yes, in fact, it works. Okay, so here we go. Can an Adel eat Maser Sheni? Here's attempted proof number one, that no, he cannot. Someone who had a Brit Milah but did not complete it and still had some strips of skin that... Uh, prevented the it from being a valid Brit Milah, cannot eat Teruma. Velo be Pesach. Also cannot eat Koban Pesach. That we know. This was our major source that uh, says specifically in Adel cannot eat Koban Pesach. Velo ba Kodashim. And not other sacrifices. We're going to talk about how come you have to mention Pesach if you're already talking about all sacrifices in Kodashim. Velo be Maaser. And here we go. This is the end of the bright time. It mentions Maaser Sheni. So, maaser says Maaser. So what kind of Maaser? My love Maaser Dagan. Is it not talking about Maaser of grain and specifically Maaser Sheni? I mean, it's not clear, but it could be. And if it is, then that would mean an Adel, and this is a type of Adel because he doesn't have a complete Brit Mila, cannot eat Maaser Sheni. Good. We have our answer. Uh, but then we say no. La Maaser Maaser Behema. Not necessarily. Could be talking about the tenth of the uh, animals, uh, when uh, you count every 10 animals and you mark it, and all those, the tenth of all the, a tenth of all the animals, you bring to Yerushalayim and you offer as a sacrifice, the owner eats it. Uh, so maybe it's talking about that, that the owner has to, can, if you're not ill, cannot bring that korban. No, we say maser behema hainu kodashim. No, maser is not regarding animals because that is a type of sacrifice. So that would be included in the category of kodashim already. But we reject that. But look, it says pesach and this is kodashim, which means that even though it has a general category of kodashim, this baraita doesn't mind specifying one specific type, which is pesach. So it may very well be specifying a specific type of, of uh, another specific type which is Masar Behema. And so it could, could be talking about Masar Behema and not Masar Sheni. Um, no, but then we, uh, we answer that. We say, Bishlama Pesav Kodashim Serichi. No, regarding these two, Pesach and Kodashim, I need to specify both of them. Titana Pesach Mishum Da Adelut Be Pesach Ketiva Aba Kodashim Emala. If it only said Pesach, uh, then I would, think, uh, I would say Pesach and Adel cannot eat it because there it's explicit. But other Kodashim, where it does not, the Torah does not say explicitly that uh, Adel cannot eat it, I would say maybe they can eat it. So I, have to write, I definitely have to write Kodashim. Itana Kodashim, Hava Amina Mai Kodashim Pesach, Ela Pesach. And if else is only Kodashim, I would, I would have said, Kodashim, what is that talking about? Maybe it's, maybe it's talking about Korban Pesach, uh, not all Kodashim. So after I Pesach, so that I know, yes, for sure Pesach, because Adel says that explicitly, and then Kodashim would, be come to, would come to include other types of animals. So I do need these two. But uh, this one, Maasa, uh, Maaser, uh, could not be Maaser Behema, because that wouldn't be included, that would be included in Kodashim, and there would no, be no reason to specify specifically, uh, like there is a reason for Pesach. So therefore, we reject this interpretation. It is not Maaser Behema, uh, so it is a Maaser of some type of grain. So are we back to our good conclusion that it's Maaser Sheni? And we say no. Um, uh, ela, well, first we said ela masar behema la mali. We would, there's no reason to specify masar behema. Rather, ela masar rishon. Okay, but nevertheless, it's not a good proof because even if it's masar of some type of grain, it's not necessarily masar sheni. It could be masar rishon. That goes to the levi. And there is another machloket in general about what's the status of Maaser Rishon that goes to the Levi. Uh, is it uh, considered sanctified or not? Uh, 
uh, the general opinion says Masishin is not sanctified. You have to give it to the Levi, but Levi could share it with whoever he wants. And uh, even nowadays, this is an important halacha where, where uh, we, we don't have, have we don't have Leviim to. Uh, it, the, I mean, you could give it to a Levi, but uh, farmers today uh, don't have to give it to a Levi because the idea is that. Let a Levi come and prove that he's really a Levi, and then he could take it. So uh, instead, we uh, we say Hamosim Chabero Lavare Aya, and instead the, the for whoever grows it just eats the Maser Rishon because it does not is not sanctified. Um, but Rabbi however, disagreed with that, and he said, no, it is sanctified, and therefore non uh, uh, um, Israelites. Non Levim are not allowed to eat it. And so, therefore, uh, he would be the opinion here who also says that Adel is not allowed to uh, eat the Maaser. So, it could be very well be talking about Maaser Rishon. And so, there is no proof from this Baraita that Maaser Sheni is permitted. So, now we move on to the second attempted proof that Adel uh, is uh, prohibited from Maaser Sheni. Uh, let's see. Tashema midetane rebi chia bar rav midifti. Arel asur bishte maaserot. That's the Braita. Says Arel is prohibited from eating two types of maaser. What two? Which two types? My love, echad maaser dagan, vechad maaser behema. Must be one is talking about maaser dagan, maaser shen, specifically maaser sheni, and the other one is maaser behema. And there you go. And Arel is prohibited for maaser sheni. Good. That sounds like a good proof. But we can reject the hachaname maaser ishon v'ribi meir. We can have, say the same thing uh, as before. This is talking about two types of maaser. Yeah, maaser beman. The other one is maaser ishon, and this would follow the opinion of meir, who against other chachamim, other chachamim say that maaser ishon. Uh, yeah, well, you have to give it to a Levi, he can't be eaten by anyone, it's not sanctified, and therefore Nadel could eat it. But Rabbi Meir said, no, a Levi, only a Levi can, can eat it, not a Yisrael. And uh, so since it has some amount, some level of sanctification, and Nadel cannot eat it. So this Baraita is Rabbi Meir, and therefore it's not referring to Maaseh Sheni at all. I mean, not necessarily, so it's no proof. All right, so now the third attempted proof that an Arel cannot eat Maser Sheni. Ta Shema. Onen asur be Maser ve umotar be bitruma ube para. The following Braita does not mention Arel. So it's going to be a proof from the absence of Arel here. Now this Braita brings three matters where you have a pattern. Onen cannot have Maser, but can eat Tiruma and can perform Para Aduma. So that's the pattern. And Onen is prohibited in one item, but permitted in two items. Similarly, Tevul Yom, uh, someone who was Tameh and went to the Mikveh before it gets dark, in that in between time when they're like 80% Tahor, cannot eat Tiruma. That's the first Mishan Barachot. All right, um, that uh, only until Kohanim Nichnasim Lechol Bitrumatan, which is nighttime, that's when you can say Shema. Okay, so Tvulim cannot have Tiruma, that's the one no, but two yeses. Umutar be para u be maaser, a tibul yom can perform para aduma. That was the huge machloket between the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees and the rabbis say yes, he can. And in uh, ma- uh, eating maaser sheni, good. U mechusar kipurim. Now the third category, mechusar kipurim is someone who was tame mesora or zav. And they uh, did their seven days and went to the mikveh. Uh, but on the eighth day, they have to bring korbanot. So if they did not yet bring korbanot, they uh, they did everything else. That's called mechusar kipurim. Asur bepada. They cannot perform para aduma. Umutar bitruma b'maaser. And they can do the other uh, tiruma. And they can eat tiruma. And they can eat maaser. Sheni. Good. So we have three items where you have a pattern. There are different uh, different uh, permutations, but the pattern stays the same. One prohibited, two things are permitted. That's the end of the Braita. Now, Vim Ita, if an Arel was permitted to eat uh, Maaser Sheni, then we should have included it in this list because it follows the same pattern. Nitni Arel Asur Bitruma. We know an Arel cannot have Teruma. Uh, uh, however, mutabe para be maaser, but can have para. And if maaser was permitted, 
then it would be one prohibited, two things permitted, and would have been included in this list. And the fact that it's not included in this list must be that the reason is because ma'asir is prohibited. And so, arel, you would have to say, is asur in tiruman ma'asir and mutabe para. But that would be two prohibited, one permitted. That's not the pattern of this beraita. It only has, this beraita has one prohibited, two permitted. And so ma'asir would be on the wrong side of the balance. And therefore, this is a proof that arel cannot eat ma'asir sheni. All right, you can see this is... Uh, complex proof that's based on a number of assumptions. And so we're going to break precisely one of those assumptions right now, uh, which is regarding para. Who, how do you, who said you assume that Arel is mutabe para, but even that is not agreed by everybody. Haitana deber bi akiba hi, de marbe le le arel ketame. Maybe this braita is the opinion of the school of Rabbi Akiba, even though Rabbi Akiba uh, didn't say anything uh, directly about this, but it could be from his school. That's an interesting phrase, right? It means his, his students, the student students who follow him. Anyway, in his school, they uh, in, they consider an arel like a tameh for certain matters, because uh, Rabbi Akiba says, ish, ish, this pasuk, which is in the context of eating holy things, and it says ish and it adds another ish, and that includes an arel. Then arel would be prohibited from teruma. And from this, we also learn that an arel is prohibited in para. And so, therefore, uh, no matter what, you have two items that an arel is prohibited to, according to Rabbi Akiva. And maybe that's why he didn't mention arel, because arel is asur bitruman and, and para. And even if it's mutar bima'aser sheni, you still wouldn't include it because it's two and one. And uh, it could very well be that Masid is prohibited or Masid is permitted. Either way, you would not include it in this list if, in fact, it is a Biakiva. So there may be another reason that it's not included in the list and not because Masid is shown as prohibited. Maybe it's because Para is prohibited and we follow the Biakiva. Okay, good. So that rejects that third proof. Uh, now that we brought the opinion of Rabbi Akiva regarding uh, uh, in this matter, we're going to mention that there are others who disagree with Rabbi Akiva. In other words, assuming Rabbi Akiva is the author of this, uh, or his school is the author of this Baraita, we're going to bring someone who disagrees with another aspect of the Baraita, of the Baraita not directly this one. Um, the, the, these three paragraphs are a little bit disjointed as she tries to link them together, but then you have to make some logical jumps. Uh, so uh, better to say that they're just loosely related. And uh, Mechusar Kippurim is the one that we're going to disagree with now. Uh, and so Rabbi Akiva thinks, and yes, Mechusar Kippurim is Asur Bepara, but not everyone agrees with that. So Mantana de Palega led Rabbi Akiva, who disagrees with Rabbi Akiva, assuming he is the author of that Baraita. Tana Debe Rabbi Yosef Hababli Hi. It's the Tana Kama who argues with Rabbi Yosef uh, in the Babylonian in the following Baraita, the Tanya. Serefat Onen U Mechusar Kippurim. Here you go, Onen and Mechusar Kippurim, that's what, that's what we need. Regarding burning the Para Aduma. Keshera says it's okay. So you see that disagrees with Mechusar Kippurim Asube Para. Tanakama here says Mutar Be Para. Rabbi Yosef Ababli Omer Onen Keshera Mechusar Kippurim Pesula. Rabbi Yosef Ababli disagrees with that Tanakama and would be in accordance with Rabbi Akiva here. But we see that there is in fact a Machloket. Okay. Uh, in any case, uh, this Baraita has no proof because it could be like Rabbi Akiva and therefore he would not include Arel for another reason that that doesn't fit the pattern. And so we have no proof no matter what. And so now we can uh, come back here, right? And uh, can an, an Arel eat Maaseh Sheni? Uh, these three attempted proofs um, do, do not hold up. And instead, we're going to go back to the original question, formulation of the question, Tudav Sheshat, which is um, since uh, regarding Korban Pesach, says explicitly that an Arel cannot have Korban Pesach, should we connect it? Uh, and if we connect it, if we, if through a Gezerah Shava, then it will hold up. Or we asked, is it a Kalvachomer? In which case, well, Pesach is more Chamur, so you can't make a Kalvachomer. So now we're going to bring an opinion that says, yes, you can make a Gezerah Shava. And so uh, this will be, at least according to the Yitzchak, the answer is that Adel cannot eat uh, Teduma, to eat Maaseh Sheni, just like Korban Pesach. Ve'af Rabbi Yitzchak Savar. Arel asur b'ma'aser. The ve'af here, and also 
um, is must be going back to Rav Sheshat. Rav Sheshat tried to prove from, from the Mishnah and Bikurim that in Arez Asur, we rejected that proof because we said maybe it's leaving out some things. But Rav Sheshat himself thought it was a good proof. And now we're saying, oh, he has a colleague. Rabbi Yitzchak agrees. Damar Rabbi Yitzchak. Good, finally, a nice explicit statement. Arel cannot have maaser sheni sheneemar. Mimenu be maaser, veneemar mimenu be pesach. Ma mimenu amor be pesach, arel asur bo. Af mimenu ha amor be maaser, arel asur bo. He's learning it from the extra word mimenu that is said regarding maaser sheni. Uh, we're going to show all these that the words that the, they are extra. Right now, we don't know that they're extra yet. So it says the word mimenu regarding maaser sheni, and it says the word mimenu regarding korban pesach, and therefore we make a gezer shava. And just like regarding mimenu of pesach in that context, and Adel cannot eat, ha, eat korban pesach, so too the mimenu connects us with the other one and says maaser sheni. Also, and Adel cannot eat maaser sheni. Okay, good. Now that we set up the Gezer Shava, we ask, Mufne, are, is, are they extra, at least one of them, uh, one side? Is there an extra word there? Because if there's no extra word, then we can reject it, we can challenge it. And the Gezer Shava, if, if neither side is, uh, is an extra word, then you can shoot it down if there's any logic, logical reason not to uh, compare them. And here, there is a logical reason not to compare them. Uh, after all, Pesach is more stringent, right? That is the, that, that is the, that's the fundamental challenge uh, because Ma Pesach, Pigul, if you're once performing Koban Pesach with intention to eat it outside the, of the right time and place, or if it's left over, uh, also if, if, if someone's Tameh, it's Isur Karet, if they eat Koban Pesach, all those uh, things are not true of, of uh, Maaser Sheni, which although you cannot eat a Tameh, it's not Isur Karet, so Pesach is more Machmir, and therefore I could reject this comparison. Unless there's an extra word. So we say, No, in fact, there is an extra word. So now we have to prove it. So in fact, it says three times in uh, regarding, um, I'll bring you the Pesukim here, and uh, it says three times the word Mimenu regarding Korban Pesach. It also says the word Mimenu three times regarding Maaseh Sheni. We'll get to that in a second. Regarding Pesach, it says, Al tochilu Mimenu na. Uh, do not eat the Korban Pesach raw. And then the next Pesuk, Mimenu ad boker, and don't leave it over until the morning. You have to eat it at night. And if you did leave it over, So this is an Isur Alav, but even if you violated this, there is a way out. Uh, so it's Alav Hanitak Le'ase, that you can get out of the Lav by burning it. Still not allowed to do it, but if you did it, then burn it in the morning. So he says, he says, Mimenu here and Mimenu here, so three times Mimenu. So we have to account for all three of these. So one of them we, meet, we need for its own context. And one of them we need, we can use for a Gezer Shava, that's extra. And the other, the third one, Vehad, well, this one, the third Mimenu, we're going to end up saying is there only for a stylistic parallelism. And not really needed. So, since the third one is selling you, oh, it left it over, then, uh, then burn it. So that's an Ase, that makes up for a Lot Ase. I did have notar ketiv nami mimenu. So since you already wrote uh, notar veha notar, uh, so you could I guess you could have technically written notar ad boker a notar what? Oh notar mimenu. So we wrote mimenu again just because we wanna talk about the positive that you can do in case you did the negative. So we're repeating the menu uh, from here, even though it doesn't teach anything uh, content-wise, new. No. There is another opinion which comes to the same thing, that it's not just saying that you should burn it, but it's adding a second morning. In other words, if you didn't eat it that night, the night of the, the first uh, of the Sedet, of the first uh, uh, night of Pesach, then you don't burn it that next morning because it's still Yom Tov, but rather you wait till the first day of Chol HaMoed. 
the second day of Pesach. And that's what it means. Ad Boker is an extra word here to tell me the next, the morning after that morning. So he says Ad Boker twice also. And according to that opinion, also is parallelism. Since it says Mimenu Ad Boker in the first half of the Basuk, we're repeating Mimenu Ad Boker in the second half of the Basuk for stylistic reasons. Okay. So, um, uh, really, there's, uh, the, you, you, uh, you know, if we didn't have uh, uh, a second extra, there's another, actually another one that's kind of waiting that could be extra. It's interesting that we, you know, we're uh, so in- intent on uh, using each and every one, uh, but sometimes it's just for uh, parallelism. Okay, so there you go. It's There's uh, three of them, and one of them is, in fact, extra, so we can have, it is Mufne, and we can uphold this Gezerah Shava. Okay, Tilata Mimenu Keti Bema'aser. And it also has uh, three times that it says Mimenu in regarding Ma'aser Shani. And while we're at it, let's explain all three to make sure that we are using all of them. Otherwise, we don't want any extra words here. And this is in the Vidui that the person says um, regarding Ma'aser Shani. Uh, the person says this, the farmer would say this. Um, uh, after the third year and sixth year, uh, when he, when there's a mitzvah of uh, uh, cleaning out all the ma'aseh sheni that you've been holding on to uh, in, in those three years. And so he comes and says, Lo be'oni mimenu. I did not eat it as in onen, from it, from the ma'aseh sheni. But also, velo menu be'tameh. I did not uh, use it while I was tameh, uh, which from here we learn you cannot even burn it and benefit from it while uh, if it's tameh. Uh, but mimenu says it, to exclude something else, we saw yesterday that the, that excluded teruma. Teruma, you can burn as fuel and benefit from it. And we're going to learn something from this also in a second. So you see, it says three times here. Mimenu. What are these three? Chad uh, One we need for this own, for its own context. The second one is for the biabhu. That's what we saw in the previous stuff. That. Mimenu all means only ma'aseh sheni. You cannot burn when if it's tameh. You cannot burn and benefit from. But that excludes teruma, where you may burn as fuel and benefit from. So that's what we need that mimenu for for the biabhu regarding teruma. Vechad lideresh lakish and the third one I need for resh lakish. What does he say? Tamar resh lakish. I'm going to be samya. Mi na'in the ma'aseh sheni shenitma shimuta lesucha. Ah, so it teaches us that ma'aseh sheni. If you became Tameh, you are allowed to anoint your body with it. Shene, how do you know that? Shema velo natati menu lemet, because it says, I did not give it to the dead. Now, in uh, in the Peshat, it's talking about in olden days, people would give offerings to the dead. The dead ancestors will became like divine beings that they would pray to and worship to and give food to. And that is prohibited according to the Torah. Uh, but here we're reading it even a little bit more specifically that I did not give it to the dead. Lemet hu de la natati, halachai dumia de met natati. This comes to actually not only prohibit something, but permit something similar. I did not give it to the dead. Um, so that means I am allowed to give it to a live person in a similar way that I could give it to the dead. Now, dead can't eat, so it's not talking about eating, right? What is some use of oil that can equally apply to a dead body and a live person. That is anointing. Uh, why would you anoint a dead body? I don't know, to prepare it for whatever. Um, uh, but the point is that you could do it to a body and you could do it to a live person. And therefore, we learned that it's prohibited to a dead person, but it's permitted to a person who's alive. That is the Shakish's uh, uh, derivation. So that's what we use the, fir- the third, Mimenu. Mimenu is, Mimenu is a limiting word. It's only prohibited to a dead, but it's permitted to, uh, to do to a live person to anoint. Okay, good. So now we have the three things that we use Maaseh Shani for, and, and those are all used up. But there is an extra word regarding Pesach, an extra Mimenu. So that's good enough. According to some, Matkif la Morzutrav Emalikahlo Aron Vetachrichim. Hold on, regarding this, how do you know it means that uh, you can uh, you cannot anoint a dead body, but you can anoint a live person? Maybe it says when it says, I didn't use it for a dead person, it means I didn't sell the Maseshani and take the money and buy a coffin and burial shrouds. That's why I didn't do. That's what's not allowed. 
and then so we couldn't learn anything about anointing. No, mimenu means from it, from the maaser sheni, means from the uh, the substance of the maaser sheni itself, from the oil, not from the money that the proceeds after I sold it. it has to be something that I use the actual maaser sheni for, which can be in the form of oil. Rav uh, Amar she agrees, but from a different pasuk, different uh, word. Lo natati dumya de lo achalti malam migufo afkan migufo. Since the the, com, the pasuk compares, I did not give it and I did not eat it, so it has to be in a similar way. Just like regarding eating, the problem is eating the maaseh sheni itself, not eating the money. You don't eat money, right? It's talking about it's it, it, it the substance itself. So to lo nat so to no natati, I did not give it to the dead. It is referring not to money that I sold it for, but rather it itself the Maaseh Sheni itself in the form of oil by anointing. So, okay, good. So we answered those questions. And now we're back with the Gezer Shava is all good. The three Maaseh Sheni menus are used up, but there's an extra one regarding Pesach. And therefore, we can use the Gezer Shava because it has an extra word. And uh, even though Pesach is more Machmir, that's all right. We have an extra word so that the Gezer Shava stands according to most. But still, it's only an extra word on one side of it, which is fine according to the one who says that we can learn and we do not refute a Gezer HaShava that has uh, oh, an extra word on one side. But there is another methodology that says we, if it has, if it's extra word only on one side, then we can learn and refute it. So this one can be refuted because Pesach is in fact more Machmir. So what are you going to do about that? And the answer is, you know what, we can find an extra Mimenu regarding Maaseh Sheni. The, what we learned, where, according to Rabbi Abhu, Rabbi Abhu said, how do you know that you can burn teruma as fuel, that's Tameh, and benefit from it? From the word Mimenu regarding Maaseh Sheni. So Rabbi Abhu used, it, used one of the Mimenus. But now we say, you know what, we can learn that same law from a different Pasuk, and therefore we will have an extra Mimenu in Maaseh Sheni. Um, uh, who learned it from an extra, a, a different, a different way? Here, Rav Nachman, Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rav Abba Abu, Mai Dichti, Vaani Hine Natati Lecha Et Mishmeret Terumotai. In Bimbim Bar Eighteen, it says, Hashem says, I have given you the Mishmeret of the watching of my Terumot, plural Terumot. Two different types of teruma. What kind of, what do you mean two different types of teruma? Acha teruma tehora, acha teruma temea. Some says, I gave you, Kohanim, two kinds of teruma. You are allowed to use it to benefit from it, whether it's tahor or tameh. If it's tahor, you can eat it. If it's tameh, you cannot eat it, but you can burn it for fuel and benefit from the fuel. So, right, I gave it to you, it's yours, and if it's tameh, don't eat it, but you can use it as fuel and burn it under your pot while you're cooking. And so since Rabbi uh, Nachman learns that halacha from this pasuk in Bemidbar, we don't need the use of one of the mimenus for the biabhu, and therefore uh, that one of the mimenus is in fact extra, and so this gezera shava of Rabbi Yitzchak is extra on both sides. Uh, since it's extra on both sides, it cannot be refuted, and so that is... Um, a, a final answer, at least according to the Bishak, who will agree with Rav Sheshat, uh, that an Arel cannot eat Maaser Sheni, and that concludes that topic. We now go to the next topic, which is about someone who's Tameh, uh, try to prove that he cannot eat Sa'it Teruma. Uh, this, in fact, was the next case in the opening Mishnah of the Perek, which said, Hai Arel, Vechol HaTameim Lo Yochlu Bitruma. Kol HaTameim. Okay, so question, how do we know that someone Tameh cannot eat Teruma? Amar Yochanan Amishum Rabbi Ishmael Amar Kera Ish Ish Mizera Aharon Vehu Sarua O Zab So Rabbi Yochanan quotes Rabbi Ishmael who says the Pasuk in Vayikra 22.4 says Ish Ish from Zera Aharon This is Rabbi Ishmael, so he's not necessarily learning from the doubled Ish 
because the Bishmael doesn't use that. And that's a Biakiva. He learns from double language. The Bishmael says, uh, So watch how he derives it. Uh, says, Avhu Sarua Ozab, and so on. Um, we could see the original Pasuk here. Um, but Kodashim lo yochal adasher yitar. Uh, so cannot eat Kodashim. Kodashim can include lots of different things, including Teruma, uh, which is a holy object until he becomes pure. So why does it say he Mizera Aharon, uh, not just, you know, Kohanim? Uh, so, what is something that is equal to all the children of Aharon, meaning sons and daughters? So that's Teruma, uh, because both uh, sons of Kohanim and Bat Kohen can also eat Teruma. Good. Hold on. Why don't you say also Hazeva Shok? A Bat Kohen can eat sacrificial parts of an animal just as. A male Kohen can. Uh, so then we should include that also. And uh, in, 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 uh, uh, so maybe it's talking about only that and not Teruma. Uh, so Kodashim is referring to sacrificial parts, not Teruma. And maybe Teruma, in fact, uh, do not have to be Tahor. No, we say Ana Behozeret. Hazeva Shok does not apply equally to men and women because if a woman gets married to Israel, she stops everything. Teruma and Hazeva Shok. If she gets divorced and goes back to her father's house, she can continue eating Teruma, but she can cannot she cannot continue eating Hazeva Shok because she's not the way she was originally bin Ureha. So she cannot. So therefore you see that this Pasuk that says a Tame person cannot eat Kodashim is not referring to Hazeva Shok. Because only regarding Teruma can we say Mizera Aharon are men and, and women equal. Okay, then we ask Teruma Name, Enaba Halala. If we have a Halala, someone who she uh, marries a divorcee or something, uh, she becomes a Halala and then she cannot eat Teruma. And so here is a difference between men and women. A woman Halala cannot, cannot eat. And then we say, Halala, love Zarod Aharon he. Once a woman becomes Halala, she's no longer the uh, lineage of Aharon. Or she loses her status as a Bat Kohen. And so therefore she's excluded from this Pasuk altogether. Anyone who is Zera uh, Aharon, uh, all men and women who are Zera Aharon can eat Teruma. Halala does not even count as Zera Aharon. She's excluded altogether. All right, good. So that's it. That's the, that's the proof. Uh, simple enough. Uh, but now we want to d- dig in further regarding how tahor do you have to be uh, in order to eat teruma. So, and we ask, umimai dehai ad asher yitar ad deika he'areb shemesh. This uh, is talking about bringing in two sources. One is the pasuk that says until it becomes tahor, right? So, on how tahor uh, does it have to be? Um, uh, assuming, uh, let's say, someone who uh, had to bring, uh, wait seven days, like a Zav or Sarua, and then bring a Korban, so is it enough that they be, that they wait till Harev Shemesh, until it gets dark, or do they, and they're Mechusar Kippurim, that's okay, or do they have to actually wait till after they bring the Korban? So how do we know that Harev Shemesh is enough? And they don't have to actually bring Korban. How do we know this is true altogether? This goes back to that Braita. Let's scroll back to see it. That Braita that said one I, one thing and two things. Uh, mentioned Mechusar Kippurim as one of the uh, examples. And said Mechusar Kippurim So there, that's what we're that's what we're trying to prove now. How do we know that Zav or Misora that it's after seven days and they went to the Mikveh and it got dark, but on the eighth day. They didn't yet bring their korban. How do we know that they can eat teruma, or do we include them as one of the people that is tameh? Right? We just proved that someone who is tameh cannot eat teruma. Maybe this person is mechusar kipurim and is still tameh. Okay, that's the question. Emma, um, How do you know that it's until Adev shemesh? Maybe he has to bring the sacrifice too. Here's the answer. So Bishmael said that Pasuk that we were we've been discussing this whole time. See here it says 
Uh, continues and says, It's comparing Mesora and Zav to someone who became, uh, who uh, con contracted corpse impurity. Now, corpse impurity, you have to wait seven days, that's true, and do paraduma and go to the mikveh uh, twice, but there's no korban, there's, not, there's no mechusar kipura, so, kapara, so therefore we can compare them and say this uh, mesora and zav are talking about cases where the zav only saw two emissions. And so, yes, he has to wait seven days, but does not have to bring korban. Or a mitzorah who was quarantined to see what would happen, but was not, was not a for sure mitzorah. And so both of these, they are tameh, but they don't have to bring kapara, and they can eat terumad. Now, therefore, even someone who does have to bring a kapara, someone who saw three times, or for sure mitzorah, they can, they are equivalent to the law of someone who doesn't bring kapara, and both of them can eat teruma after the seven days, and it gets and and it gets uh, dark, and they went to the mikveh even before bringing kapa, bringing korban, whether they had to or not. That's his proof. Okay, hold on. That's not a proof. That only shows that if you don't have to bring a um, a sacrifice. Then you can eat teruma once the process is done, but that doesn't mean anything. Maybe when you do have to bring a sacrifice, if it is a three times zav and a full mesora, then you have to wait till the completion of the whole process, meaning after you bring a sacrifice. Uh, just because this pasuk isn't talking about that case doesn't mean that it's permitted. That's question one. And another question. There's actually three different levels that we want to prove. Two haditnan. So this is important Mishnah here in Negaim that illuminates three levels. Tabal ve'ala. Someone who was tameh, they went to the mikveh during the day, and they're now waiting. They're tevul yom. They're waiting till it gets dark. That person ochel b'maseh. They can eat maseh sheni. That's level one. Harif shimsha. Once it gets dark, ochel b'teruma. Can eat teruma. That, that's mechusar kipurim. Hevi kapara. Once he brings the korban on the eighth day, ochel bakodashim. Then he can eat uh, actual sacrificial uh, meat, right? Uh, so min elan. This mishnah. What's the source for all of these three? This is really great mishnah, right? We see the three time periods that we're talking about, and we see the going up in levels. Maaseh sheni, teruma, and then kodashim. Each one becomes permitted at the next level. Okay, so we have to deal with two questions. We're going to answer the second one first, and then we're going to come back to the first. Amar Rava, Amar Rav Chista, Telata Kere Luckily, we have three Pesukim, and from them, from there, we can learn all three of these uh, levels. Ketib, and they're all back to back in uh, uh, in this Perek, right after this, um, these three Pesukim here. Um, so let's see, Amar Telata Ketib. You cannot eat holy things until you wash. Kodeshim here doesn't necessarily mean Kodesh food. Uh, we're going to say it's talking about Maaser, uh, which has some level of holiness, until you wash. So that's it. After you go to the Mikveh, then Tevul Yom, you can uh, eat Maaser Sheni. Hadahas Tahor. Once you wash, your Tahor somewhat. Ketib uba shemesh betahel v'achad yochal mina kodashim. Next pasuk says, once it gets dark, then you're tahor, more tahor, and you can eat kodashim, another type of kodesh, holy food. That's referring to teruma. And the third pasuk says, and then once you do the full korban, then you become 100% tahor, and then you can eat the next level, which is Kodashim HaKesad. So what are the, why do we need all these three Pesukim? Even though they don't specify exactly what they're referring to, we can fill it in. This three levels of Tahara refers to Kahad HaKesad, Kan HaMaser, Kan Litzruma, Kan Kodashim. It's a beautiful system. Um, okay, good. So we see from here is that Kodashim is the third level that is required after uh, one brings a sacrifice. The other two are even before a sacrifice. So this is a good proof just by itself that uh, teruma, you don't have to wait until you bring a sacrifice. Okay, now question uh, regarding the first two, however, maser and teruma. Why do you assume that maser is the first level and teruma is the second level? Maybe switch them around. 
right? The Pesukim again don't say what they're referring to. So we say, maybe we should switch it around. No, Mista Bera Tiruma Adifa Tiruma makes sense that it should be the string the more stringent one. Because look at the stringencies that it has. Sheken Machpaz. As we mentioned before, it has mita bide shamaim if you eat it on purpose. It has a chet chomesh if you uh, eat it by mistake, you have to add a fifth. Pijon, you can't redeem it, which you can, maaseh sheni. And uh, zarim, non kohanim cannot eat uh, teruma, but they can eat maaseh. So you see, it's more stringent, that's why it's the second level. Now we ask about that way, adraba, maaseh adifa sheken hadas tab. We haven't seen this yet, right? This is a new mnemonic, which is a beautiful mnemonic, hadas tab, a nice myrtle. Uh, so it's easy to remember and not so easy to apply because not all the letters are obvious. Um, so anyway, Maaseh Sheni maybe is more stringent and that should be the second level because after all, the He stands for Havaya, that you have to bring Havaa, you have to bring it to Yerushalayim, which is not true for Maaseh, you don't have to bring Maaseh to Yerushalayim. The Dalit stands for Vidui, the Dalit in Vidui, and not the Vav, I guess it's, um, we want to make a nice mnemonic, Hadas Tav, otherwise it would be, you know, uh, would not be as good. So that's the Vidui, have to say vidui regarding maaser. You don't. There's no vidui for teruma. Samech stands for asur uh, for an onen uh, to eat maaser, even though an uh, onen can have teruma. Uh, and then uh, also tuma. Um, uh, that you cannot benefit from burning tame maaser. What and you can benefit from burning tame teruma and biur getting rid of it all of it in the fourth and seventh years applies to maaser and not to teruma. So actually maaser is in many ways more stringent than uh, than teruma. No afilu mita adifa. Here we can't say the number game. Because here this one has five and uh, Tiruma only has four. So in terms of numbers, Maaseh would be more. But nevertheless, Mita Adifa, death is better, meaning more stringent that Maaseh, since Tiruma has a death penalty involved, even though Bide Shamaim, that's more stringent than anything regarding Maaseh. And that's why that would be the second level. Rava Amar, Belo Mita Adifa, Namelo Masita Amar. Rava says, I could argue. I agree, but I could argue it in a different way that Tiruma is more stringent than Maaser. Amar Kera Nefesh, Ezu De Dabar Sheshave Bechol Nefesh, Haveze Omer Maaser. The Pasuk that we associated with Maaser, the first one, says the word Nefesh. We could look at it inside. Nefesh, Shetiga Bovit, Am Adav, Lo Yochal Mina Kodashim. So why Nefesh means anyone, some, uh, something that applies equally to all people. That's Maser Shani, where everyone can eat Maser Shani, not only Kohanim. So that's why it makes sense that to apply the first Pasuk that says, after Mikveh, you can eat that, if uh, that's a Tibul Yom, can have Maser Shani. Okay, good. Ve'akate. Now, we answered that second question I mentioned, but back to the first question. I still, you have not only proved that a mesora or a zav who doesn't require kapara, if he only saw two times, or he was only a quarantined mesora, is since he doesn't require to bring, have a sacrifice, that's when after um, it gets dark, that he can eat teruma. But if he requires a sacrifice, you still haven't given me a proof that he uh, he can eat teruma before he brings the sacrifice. Maybe only after atonement, after he brings the sacrifice. An answer. We're going to learn from another context altogether, and that is a woman who gives uh, who gives birth. Tahara, uchti v'chipera la kohen v'tahera. A woman who gives birth it goes through various stages. For a boy, first she is tameh for seven days. From the eighth day till the fourteenth day, she has the status of like a tevul yom. After that. After the 40th day, she brings a korban. So we have an equivalence here. Ad yemet melot yemet tahara until the 40 days are up is stage one. And after that, she becomes tahar. 
the day after she brings the korban, and then it says, uh, So then she has atonement and she's fully tahor. That's for a boy. For a girl, it would be from the after the 14th day till the 80th day, she is like a tevul yom. After the 80th day ends, she becomes a mechusar kipurim, and when she brings a korban, after the 80th day, then she is fully tahor. So she also has two levels of tahara. So what are they? Hakesad, kan litruma, kan kodashim. So one of them is for tiruma, and the second one is for kodashim. And so here we can prove this. She is for sure a mechuseret kipurim. She definitely has to bring a korban when she's done. And yet, even for her, it says that she has a level of tahara, that she can now do something. So what can she do? She can have tiruma. And you can't say, oh, maybe she's a type of, there's no type of Yoledet that doesn't bring a, bring a Korban, uh, like there is for Zav and uh, Metzora. And so, therefore, we answered the second, the, uh, the, the first question that we had before. And uh, we know that uh, she um, brings Tiruma even before she brings a Korban. And that's it. That's the answer to our, our original question. Hold on, not so fast. Vepuch Ana, maybe we should flip these around. And say the uh, and say that first she could eat kodashim and only then teruma. No, mista bera kodesh hamor sheken pan kachas. No, it makes sense that the uh, uh, eating sacrificial meat that will be the more stringent one that you can only eat after uh, bring after bringing a full atonement because this has the following six items: pigul if you uh, uh, made it with imp- improper intention to eat it. Uh, afterwards, after the time, or notad it has it's, uh, has a time limit. Otherwise, it's left over. It's not true for teruma. It's, it is a korban that you're actually offering on the mizbeach, which is not true with uh, with teruma. Uh, me'ila ayin is for me'ila. One violates me'ila if one takes from the korban inappropriately. Uh, karet. Uh, if uh, one eats it while tameh, the punishment is karet, and it's asur for an onen. All these apply to uh, to korban, which do not apply to teruma. So for sure, this is going to be the more stringent one. And we say, no, maybe not. Adraba teruma hamora sheken machpaz. Uh, no, maybe Turma has more because Machpaz, we just went through that. We don't have to do it again. No, Hanach Nefishin, the ones for Korban are for sure more. These are six and these are only four. Rava Amar, Velo Hanach Nefishan, Ramesit Amar. Rava, as usual, says, I don't need to count the relative numbers. I can bring another Pasuk that uh, proves that this is so. Amar Kira, Vechiper, Alea Kohen, Vetahera. Mikelal shehi temea. So the pasuk says that she brings a korban regarding the yoledet again. Bring um, that's korban, and then tahera. So what do you mean tahera? Must be that she was tameh. bitruma. If you should think that the first pasuk regarding a Yoledet who gives birth is talking about Kodashim, and so that would mean that at the point that she becomes Tevul Yom, after waiting all the days, she, uh, after she becomes, becomes Mechusaki Purim, after waiting all the days, then she can eat Kodashim. And then on the next day, after the 40th day, or after the 80th day, she brings a Korban, then she can eat Teruma. If you would switch it around, then you'd run into a different problem from Pasuk in Vayikra, which says that um, meat, sacrificial meat, that touches anything Tameh cannot be eaten. Now, someone who's Mechusar Kipurim, even though they are 90% Tahor, are still can be called Tameh, because they're somewhat Tameh, because they're 10% Tameh. And so then they would not be able to even touch the sacrificial meat, never mind eat it. Um, or, or if they ate it, if they touched it, they wouldn't be able to eat it. Uh, so therefore, it can't be that way. Therefore, they, we have two pesukim regarding Yoledet. The first one is talking about Tiruma, when she completes her days before sacrifice, that's Tiruma. And after that, when she brings the Korban, that's Kodashim. It's got to be that way. Wouldn't make sense the other way around. One last challenge to Rava. Matkif Rav Shisha Bere de Rav Idi. Umi Masit Amat Tiruma Keti Bahacha. Can you think, would you, can you really say that the Yoledet Ishat Kitazriya is talking about Tiruma 
After all, look at this Braita that uh, focuses on the introduction of Parashat Azriya, where it says, Vatanya, the Ben El Bene Israel. It starts Ben El Bene Israel, right? And then it says, Vishaki Tazriya. And the Ela Bene Israel. Giot Vishiva Mishaminayin. So this Midrash asks, why is it addressed only Bene Israel? Does it mean that it applies only to those who are born Jewish? What about someone who, con- who converts? Or was a Canaanite slave and then becomes Jewish. Isha Isha means anyone. Okay, Navisa Kadatech Bitruma Giorat Vishivcha Benot Mechal Nirumaninhu. If you think that this context is talking about Tiruma, a convert can never eat Tiruma because only a bat kohen can marry, can eat teruma uh, and someone who is not born Jewish, there's no way that they can eat teruma. Um, but, uh, she also can't marry a Kohen. Uh, okay, so can't, couldn't eat it that way either. Uh, so therefore, it must be that this whole paragraph is talking about Kodashim, not Tiruma. Challenge to Rava. Amar Rava, velo, vakitib bechol, Kodesh, lo tiga, l'ravota Tiruma. says, no, in that, in, in that, in the, uh, the whole, the paragraph of Yoledet, it also says she should not touch any Kodesh. Um, and that, and we learn that that includes Tiruma that uh, uh, she cannot touch. So for sure, one way or another, it's talking about Tiruma somewhere in this paragraph. I'm just telling, giving you the order that first is Tiruma and then Kodashim. Uh, so uh, for sure, it's talking about Tiruma somewhere. Rather, we have to say that these Pesukim in Yoledet, in Parashat Tazriya, are talking about each matter as it comes up. And even though not every case that it comes up applies to converts, some of them apply to converts. Some of them don't apply to converts. That's why he says in the in the beginning that these general rules uh, apply to everyone becoming tame and so on. Although some of them, like regarding teruma, will only apply to someone who's uh, who's born Jewish. And that's how Rava uh, uh, supports the, his idea. And so we conclude: yes, that in fact teruma can be eaten even before one becomes uh, uh, fully atoned. Mechusai Kippurim can in fact eat Teruma. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen ve